out of that place. Where now? To the streets of Mombasa. <laughs> I became a street girl. Street in Mombasa, now street in Street Kyle. in Mombasa, street in Nairobi. Hey. Kayole, mm. the slum of Soweto. But now when it comes at night, though he has a wife, he has children, mm. it comes at night, he comes to me. What do you say? Yes. A relative. <laughs> a relative. How big is the house? It's a single room. I go to, to Kinyozi and to Ababa to shave my hair very well. Yeah. I find some short dresses. Yeah. I say I want to, to do this prostitution. What I see. Yes. So you are so desperate. I was so desperate. So you want to become a prostitute? Yes. I, I thought this, this was the only simple way to get money. It really touches me. I was totally broken and uh, that's when I, I, I had an encounter and then I got born again that day. Amen. Welcome once again to Kalaji Talk. I am Pastor Wamai and today I have a great guest with me, a great minister of music, worship minister, who have an inspirational story, who will be speaking to us today. And I believe you are going to be blessed by the end of the talk of the show today so make sure you remain to the end like share and subscribe to our channel and god shall bless you amen so welcome so much servant of god how thank are you? you i'm fine thank happy you. to meet you again once again welcome to our studios thank you it's my pleasure yes yes ah let us know who are you what's your name and then we can continue from there okay yes my name is jerusa sitabai Jerusa Sitiabai. Yes. Yes. We are born from the western part of Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, born in a family of six. Two girls and four boys and I'm the second girl. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm a minister of the gospel in singing and I love the Lord. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. Now, I know you are not you are not <laughs> born, born again. Yes. Uh, so yeah. you have a story. I have a story. And I love your story. Because Amen. God makes sure that we pass through stories yes. and through those stories he touches lives. Amen. Amen. And that yes. Jesus, that's why Jesus taught with the parables. Mm -hmm. Those parables are stories. Wow. And our lives are stories. Uh -huh. We have experiences that we have passed through. Mm -hmm. And those experiences become inspirational to many people. Yes. True? True. So, Jerusalem. Yes. Where has Jerusalem come from? To be the person we know today, the great minister. The yes. great worshiper. Mm -hmm. Where have you come from? Okay. Yes. Like I said, I've come from a, a family of six. Mm. And uh, our background wasn't, wasn't that good. I'm from a very humble background. Uh, whereby our parents couldn't uh, give us the, the basics that we needed. And uh, as personally, I was raised with a stepdad. So it was so t tough and difficult being raised with a, a stepdad in a family of six. So many needs, but uh, the capability with our parents wasn't that good. So I'm that girl who used to cut trees to go and sell the firewood for us to survive. We used to survive on sugar canes uh, because that was the, the, the only food we could get. Yeah, the, the veggies from the shamba, the bananas, and so on. And that's, that's our, our life. It was our life. And we survived through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have not come from a, a very well-up family. Not really, yeah. Yeah, you have been brought up by a stepdad. Yes. The challenges of being brought up with a stepdad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, how did you end up coming to Nairobi? And uh, or before you Nairobi, where did you go first, or how how have been your life? Okay, the journey was just like that. Mm. And after my primary school, I couldn't go further in education. Mm. With, so with all this English, you are yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So I became a house girl in Mombasa. What? Yeah, oh. I did a maid job. So from the west, you went western, from western all the way to the coast. All the way to the coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here I am as a small a house girl. girl. Yeah, as a house girl. Mm. I'm still naive. Mm. 
I don't know so many things. Mm. I'm just from the from the village, you understand? Mm. And here I am in a, in uh, with this family working with them. Mm. For one year, I thought the the salary was being sent to my mom, but it wasn't so. What? You are yes. working and you're not getting a salary. I'm not getting paid. Because they are telling you they are sending the salary to your mom. To my mom, yes. Then there wasn't any salary sent to my mom. And are you not talking to the mom to know whether the salary is getting? I paid? wasn't communicating to her. I had mm. no phone actually. Mm. I was really I young. wasn't I was young. Young and innocent. And very innocent. So you believed what they told <laughs> I you? I believed everything. <laughs> and there, were, there was no communication for you to communicate? I had no communication with my parents. So a whole one year you worked with no pay? A whole year just like that. <laughs> then what happened next? So after how, do you, how will you know they are not sending the money? And then how do you... So it reaches a point mm. and uh, I, I want to talk to my mom. I want to know how they are doing. Mm. Even though it's been long, you know, mm. they, they, they were not allowing me to communicate to them. Mm. And this, it reaches this minute and uh, I want to talk to them. Mm. And then coming to find out that they had no idea mm. of where I am, my whereabouts. Mm. They are not sent anything. Mm. So I became so angry. Yeah. And yeah. I came out yeah. of that place. To where now? To the streets of Mombasa. <laughs> <laughs> you know no one else in Mombasa? Yes. And you are still young. Very young. And now you have left this family. Yes. To the street. Yes. You become a yeah. street girl. I became a street girl. <laughs> you, the person I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Has been a street girl. Yeah, I have. <laughs> are you not fearing molestation or rape cases in the streets and uh, you're still young and being a girl mm. are you but, not in that fear by then i didn't fear you didn't care i didn't care because there was no other option mm. that was the option mm. i couldn't stay in that family knowing after all that time they hadn't even sent my mom any coin mm. and here i am in the streets i don't care whatever comes my way mm. so i become a street girl mm sleeping in the vibanda mm. and life <laughs> life took me through that mm. and um, it was an experience mm. it wasn't easy it wasn't easy. i could go to a certain small hotels mm. wash utensils there just to find food mm. on a plate mm. I, w- I, w- I will go to the beach in diani mm. just to cl- to make the fish the fresh fish from the sea and just to get 20 shillings to survive on it. So you're surviving now with those peanuts. The, those the 20 small shillings things. there. 20 shillings there. Yes. You get food and then go back to the street. Go in back the night. to sleep in the, yeah, in the streets. Then? And then after some time, I came yeah. and met this girl. Mm. And she was a woman from my home, mm. from a village. Because mm. I had her speaking my vernacular. Mm. Mm. And... I just said, this is the person to help me. Mm-hmm. Because I knew she might understand me when we talk our language. Mm-hmm. So, after talking to her and opening up, mm. I wanted to serve her. Mm. I just wanted a place to lay my head. Mm. Yeah. And I told her, I'll do cleaning. Mm. I'll wash. Mm. I'll do everything for you. Mm. Just give me a place to lay my head. Mm. Because in the street, it was getting so tough. Mm. And this lady accepted me mm. and she took me in. Mm. Yeah. Amen. I did her everything. Mm. I even massaged her, <laughs> you know, trying yeah. to create that, mm. that environment to accept me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just needed a, a place to lay. Mm. And I did everything for this girl. Mm. She loved me mm. until the point that she, she delivered. She was pregnant by then. Mm. Yeah. So during that period, the husband to the lady, mm. uh, the cousin, I mean the cousin to the husband's lady, mm. get, got some interest mm. and was concerned about my life. Mm. And this guy's trying to take me out of that place. Mm. And uh, he rented me a house. Mm. And I'm starting my own life. 
so God from is the streets. Up. Yes, uh, I'm seeing a miracle. This is a miracle now. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. Mm. So <laughs> from there, now I'm in my own room, mm. single room. There, mm. I feel like now life is life is happening. Now. Is happening now. Mm. Yeah, mm. and just this guy keeps on shopping. Mm keeps on visiting me taking me out and everything you feel now the love i feel the love now i know eh mm. god is really working mm. until it came at a point mm. this guy started coming to sleep over mm. you know one day he comes a week mm. two weeks mm. and now we are staying together as his brother's <laughs> wife and wife called. yeah he has come to my house and he wants to stay with me He wants to take me as and his wife. You, are you in love with him or is are uh, these just desperate <laughs> no, wishes? No. I wasn't in love with him. Mm. Yeah. So you, you have see, gotten to this relationship out of desperation. Out of desperation because he helps me mm. and he has done a number of things for me. Yeah. And I, I I didn't have a way to thank him. Yeah. So coming to stay in the house mm. it was like this is the way to pay him back. Mm. But personally I wasn't ready for that. You weren't ready for that. Yeah. So mm. it was some months took some months mm. and I felt I wasn't for it. All this time you're not born again. All again. this time I wasn't born again though I was raised in the family mm. in a Christian foundation mm. but I, I didn't have that encounter with Christ personally. Yeah. Yeah so mm. it came a point I had to move out of the house. Mm. Because now the demands are getting too much. Mm. This guy is like wants you to meet his family, mm. and I'm seeing the seriousness, and I was not ready for it. Mm. So mm. I had to quit mm. and went somewhere else to find a, a job, mm. the same house girl job. Mm. I'm in Magongo now, doing the same. Mm. And I was preparing for Christmas. It was approaching. So I needed some money to go back with it in the village. Mm. Yes, yeah, so after some months mm. I went to the village. Mm. This is Christmas. Mm. Uh during the moment I was with this guy, mm. I used to communicate with my parents yeah. using his phone because yeah. I had no phone. Mm. So this guy gets to to know my my parents contacts mm. and one time he he he, he had a, a, a contract mm. in Kisumu. So Kisumu is close to my place. Mm. So he calls up my mom and they are meeting up without my knowledge. <laughs> mm. So yeah. So in Mombasa mm. the relationship is broken. Yeah, it is because broken. Because you have disappeared. I've disappeared. But he has not stopped pursuing you. No. So he goes to Kisumu. Yes. And because he got the contact of your mother now mm-hmm. he's pursuing he's communicating you through the mother. Exactly. And it comes to happen that he is from the the place where my mom is from. So they are your talking from, one language. My mom is from Cumberland, and ah, the guy was and, from Cumber. And your dad is? My dad is a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, so yes. it was a, a combination of a Cumber and a lawyer. And a lawyer. And yes. now this guy is a Cumber. Yeah. And has fallen in love with a lawyer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and the mom is a camba and they are meeting and now mm. the connection is very the connection deep. is so deep yes <laughs> and they are really connected mm. and my mom loved the guy mm. yeah but so for you know for me i didn't have i wasn't mm. ready for that mm-hmm. so i go home after now the christmas time yeah i go to visit my parents in the mm. village mm. and i'm being told mm. you have visitors coming to see you and i'm like which visitors Mm. I'm told that guy mm. he came home mm. he visited my place mm. and my parents are fond of him mm. they have been communicating but I didn't have the the idea mm. so here I am mm. finding myself in another fix mm. still I wasn't ready I was still young actually mm. 17 I was not ready mm. so I'm trying to figure out what to do And then it comes a day I was going for a kesha and I meet a friend of mine mm. who was looking for a house girl mm. to send to Nairobi. Mm. And I I told him here I am I want to go. <laughs> that same day with the one clothing mm. that's how I went to Nairobi. One dress. One dress. 
you come to Nairobi. I come to Nairobi as a house girl again. Yes. I'm yeah. trying to escape the marriage thing uh, from the village. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So in the morning I call up my mom, I tell her I'm in the city. Mm. And she is so angry with me. Mm. She was so disappointed. Mm. And uh, here I am in Nairobi. Mm. <laughs> uh, starting my other new job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My main aim is to raise some money to help my mom mm. at home. Mm. But now my mom wanted me to get married to this guy. Mm. So mm. after coming from home, yeah. they were so bitter with me. Mm. So here I am at the workplace and their conditions. Mm. If you break a cup, mm. it is cut from your salary, mm. a flask. And I tell you, in two weeks' time, mm. my salary was... <laughs> it was all gone. It was all gone. <laughs> because everything I could touch, mm. it went... Oh. It went down. Down. Cups, Prince. plates, flask, everything. So in two weeks' time, the salary of a full month is all gone. And on top of that, mm. I became so sick. Mm. I'm so sick, I cannot work, I cannot mm. do anything. Mm. And the boss cannot understand. Mm. The kids themselves, mm. they are on another, on another level of stubbornness. Mm. So it's a place I cannot even... I cannot be, mm. you know. Mm. So uh, I'm sent to go and buy some veggies outside there. Mm. And that's how I disappeared from that, from that place. From <laughs> you that ran family. away with <laughs> I ran away with the money and with the... <laughs> with the basket. With the basket and everything. How much money? 400 shillings. You, that is enough for the fair. That was enough. And I, I didn't know where I was going. To where, yeah. I that's don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm in Nairobi. I don't know any street. I don't know anybody. Mm. So, and but I have you're tired one. of this home. I'm now. tired of this home. Mm. I, I'm sure even if I work for the full month, mm. I'm going to get nothing. Mm. And even in two weeks, the salary is gone. So, if <laughs> I add two more gone. weeks, the salary of the other month will be also gone. So, I'm, I'm here. I'm boarding a matatu mm. to town. Mm. I don't know where town is. I find myself again in the street. I'm sick. I don't know who. I don't know where to go. So, back in the village, I used to hear Soweto, Kayole. Mm. So, and uh, so many people could say, many friends who are in that place. Mm-hmm. So, I want to reach to Soweto or Kayole mm. to maybe I can meet somebody who knows me there. Mm. So, I ask for some people around there, they show me the, the matatus to Kayole. Mm. Here I am in Kayole. Mm. Yeah. Just and now pray. to whose house? Nobody. Nobody? Yes. But you're in Kayole? Yeah, I'm in <laughs> Kayole. I don't know to who. So I'm who will accommodate you now? Nobody. I had nobody at all. So? So here I am in the street again. Back to the street? Yes. Street in Mombasa, now street in street Kayole. Street in Mombasa, street in Nairobi. Hey. Kayole. Mm. The slum of Soweto, mm. yes, with nobody mm. to turn to. So here I am again, mm. sleeping in the streets, mm. trying to just hope for maybe I can meet somebody I know, mm. something of that sort. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So my viewer, we are back to the streets <laughs> from Mobasa Street now in Nairobi Street. Mm. So what happens to this great worshiper? As we listen to her song, she has sung one song, a powerful song. As we listen to this song, we are getting to the next phase as we know what happens as she goes back to the street.
wote walio wagonjwa aina zote wanapata kupona kwa jina Yesu familia zilizosambaratika kila familia sasa zinarejeshwa so much woman of god amen now you are back on the street of nairobi yes <laughs> hey, and you don't look like a street girl <laughs> or oh, does the glory of god upon you the glory is the glory upon of me god yeah is upon sure. you mm-hmm. yes so what happened next now i'm in kayole soweto yes i used to sleep on the streets mm. and uh, i find this church mm. I, i i could enter this church in the morning mm where and worship with these people mm. and in the evening mm. i could hide in the seats mm. down the seats so that nobody sees me uh-huh. because i have no place to go yeah. and maybe it's raining outside something yeah. of the sort yeah mm. so i find myself sleeping in that church for some time i slept in that church so after the streets you stayed for some time in the street yes then you got into a certain church a certain church you are a stranger there so you hide i hide so that they cannot see me they will, so that they will not question me yeah yeah so that's it mm. and uh, back in the street you know mm. in the morning you just walk around mm. and uh, i just i come across one of my distant relatives mm-hmm. and uh, this person wants to help me yeah but now when it comes at night mm. though he has a wife he has children mm. it comes at night he mm. comes to me what are you saying yes a relative <laughs> a relative how big is the house it's a single room a single room yeah in fact it's of the iron sheets a nylon sheet single room <laughs> yes so the wife is in the bed yes I'm and this man ch- leaves the wife yes. in the bed mm-hmm. are there children At yeah the they, they had children they had two kids they had two kids yes but he has the guts yes. to leave the the bed of the wife and yes. come to you come to me start touching me mm. you know he, he he tells me you know we should help each other you know we are not related by blood so we can just do thing these things if you want me to help you if you want to stay here you will do this for me so and, he is taking advantage of your vulnerability My, and yes. the challenges you're passing. Yes. So unfortunate. And I so I had to move out of that house because uh-huh. I couldn't do according to what you wanted. To. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm back in the street again. Back to the street. Back to the street. Mm. Then I come across this certain lady. Mm. 
and she accommodated me for some days. Mm. Yeah, so during that period with, in this house, mm. I'm like, I'm tired of this life. Mm. Let me try to do something else, mm. you see. And mm. uh, I go to, to Kinyozi and to Ababa to shave my hair very well. Yeah. I find some short dresses. Yeah. I say, I want to, to do this prostitution. What I see. Yes. So you are so desperate. I was so desperate. So you want to become a prostitute? Yes. I, I thought this, this was the only simple way to get money. Yeah. So that I can rent myself my own house and live yeah. my life. Yeah. 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 So mm. uh, I wake up one day mm. and I meet this guy. Mm. We talk and you plan to meet. Mm. And we, we plan. So the time comes. Mm. I'm waiting for this guy to come and pick me up. Mm. And he's... You are well, you are, you are, you are, your mean skirt is, is in on order. point. On point. <laughs> your hairstyle is on point. Yes. And perfume. Yes. Now you are getting into the profession of... I want to get into this, you know. It's only that I don't have the connection to the Koinange Street. You would have gone there. I would have gone there direct. Because, but because you are at the end of your... I've re- I'm tired. I'm totally tired. Of the street drive. Yes. And uh, begging for accommodation. Yes, exactly. So you want to live your own life. I want to live my life selling myself to find money. (laughs) So you are now waiting for this guy. I'm waiting for this guy. Calling up. He he tells me I'm coming. Your first client. Yeah, my first client. (laughs) You see. And... (laughs) So it comes to happen that I've waited for like three, three to four hours. Mm. This guy is not appearing. Turning up. Yeah. And the phone all of a sudden goes off. I'm calling nobody. It's off. Mm. And at the point I was standing, mm. there was a certain church of, over there. Mm. So it reaches this lunch hour moment mm. and I, I start hearing some music over there. Mm. And the music, mm. it, they were, it was ministering to me, mm. you see. Mm. And I can't even explain how I got myself to that place. Mm. But I, find my, I found myself in that place mm. and I was in, in tears. Mm. Amen. Deeply, I was crying my, my heart out, mm. crying my, my, my frustrations out, mm. you know, trying mm. to ask God questions. Mm how life is taking me and everything, you understand? It was so, my, it was an, uh, an experience. An encounter? An encounter, yeah. Can yeah. use that. Yeah. So, so you are here waiting for a man. Yes. The and, man and has, Christ has, <laughs> is here coming for you. The man disappointed me. The man disappointed Now, I hear that voice. Mm. I'm drawn to, the, to, the, to that church. Mm. And I'm having this encounter with Christ. Amen. I yeah. really cried mm. that day. Mm. And uh, after the service, mm. I walked around and I went to a place called Pipeline. Yeah. And I find this mini- man of God. Mm. And he calls me, asks me, when were you born again? Mm. I'm like, born again? Born again. I have never been. <laughs> I, can't rem- I can't remember. Of course. Pastor Pius used to pr- to pray every Sunday. We used to born to get born again every Sunday. <laughs> so I can't recall how many times I've been born again. And uh, <laughs> out of fun. So, yeah, you know, it mm. it is not that encounter, but you know, you do it. Mm. Eh? And also being raised from a for a foundation that is of a Christian home, mm. I used to go to church. Mm. So I didn't know there's another salvation I need to be born again. You mm. understand? Yeah. So, and I'm just there. I don't know what to answer. Mm. And he looks at me mm. and tells me, mm. I see a spirit around you. Mm. You have a spirit of a dog. Dog spirit. Mm. And I'm like, what? What is that? Mm. He tells me, mm. I want to pray for you, salvation. Come tomorrow. Mm. It was on a, on a Saturday. Mm. So he tells me, come tomorrow. Mm. I'll, I'll pray with you so that you'll be born again. Mm. And I'm like, if this getting born again mm. can turn around my situation, mm. just pray for me now. And he's like, no, 
Mm. Come tomorrow when the church is full, mm. I pray for you. Mm. And I'm walking back to the streets of Soweto, mm. just desiring in my heart just to find somebody who is born again. Anybody. 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 Mm. I'll kneel down even if it's in the middle of, of the road mm. so that I can get born again. Yeah. So I go back to sleep. Mm. And this lady, that night, it was a very long night. Mm. I tell you, you know, I sweat. You know, to sweat. Yeah. I sweat everything. Mm. Every, on the mattress, it was water all over mm. because of the sweat. And this girl is, no, mm. <laughs> you have a curse. You are not normal. <laughs> I because cannot of the stay with you. Yes. You know, it was abnormal. Mm. I myself have never experienced such a thing. Mm. And it is, it is happening. Mm. This lady just told me, just take your things mm. and pack out of my house. Mm. And I just had to understand her. Mm. And I just asked her for me to go to church. Mm. I'll pick up later my stuff. Mm. So I go back to the church I was the previous day. So again, you're back now to the church. I'm back to that church. And uh, the worship team is leading. Mm. And they sing this song. And it really touches me. Mm. I was totally broken. Mm. And uh, that's when I, I, I had an encounter. And then... Mm. I got born again that day. Amen. And getting born again mm. also, mm. it gave me peace. Mm. But I didn't have a place to, to go. Mm. I didn't have somebody to go to mm. after that service. Mm. Yeah, so I had to, to stay back in that church. Mm. So I started doing my things around the church. I could do cleaning. So now where are you staying? In the church? I stay in the church. Uh -huh. I could clean everything. Mm. I could, the compound was neat. Mm. The church itself was so clean. Mm. That was the, you know, mm. the acceptance for me just to be there. Yeah. It yeah. was enough. Amen. It just was enough accommodation. for me. Just, what are you eating now? It's not about, eating is something else. <laughs> it, That's it, another. It's, <laughs> not an, it's an, an it's issue. It's not an, an issue at that moment. Finding a place to sleep, mm. that was the most important. Mm. I can say I, I, I was fasting, maybe. Fasting by fasting fire, by, by force. <laughs> by you force. Know. Yes. Not, not out of choice. <laughs> it was not my concern because now I've got a place to at least to lay myself. Amen. Yeah, when it rains, I'm safe inside mm. there. Mm. Yeah, I'm no longer it's on the street. It's not scary as the outside. Yeah, it's not scary. Mm. And there I knew the presence of God was there. Amen. So I knew I was safe in that church. Amen. Yeah, so I'm Amen. there committed to the work of God. Amen. And I could do those things during the day. When it comes the night, mm. <clears throat> there's this, this force mm. in me, this encounter, you mm. know, mm. this relationship with God. Mm. Now there's, there's a way mm. I'm, I'm calling on God, mm. crying my out, surrendering myself to him. Mm. You know, I'm alone in that place. Mm. With God. Mm. So, it, the, now the journey to the ministry begins at there, that point. At that point. So, God now has started working now on you. God has started working. Amen. Though things are not good, but I feel the peace, the mm. peace of God. I mm. feel safe. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Now, God is molding me day by day. Mm. Then it comes one day. Yeah. We have a, our, our lunch hours. Mm. Then this man of God comes to me and asks me, what do you want God to do for you? Yeah. And I'm like, I want to go back to school. Amen. So, mm. everybody, the members who came that day, mm. they just started giving out. Mm. Somebody buys a skirt for me, another shirt. Mm. And I don't want shoes, socks. Mm. Mm. And I'm there. Mm. And before I, I, I joined the school, there was a principal in that, in that meeting. In mm. that congregation. In that congregation. Mm. And the principal mm. had a, a school, a high school, in the same compound. Wow. So before I joined, I could, I could cook for them as a school. I cook for them and serve them, wash utensils. Mm. So, and is there ready to mm. take me into the school. Mm. 
Mm. So I become a, a student mm -hmm. and I am a cook. You are a student? Yes. You are a cook? Yes. Aha. So, you know, mm. just in that church, mm. you know, while as I study, mm. as I do the cook work, mm. and then this man of God gets gets attracted and he's touched by the, the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, your situation. Yeah, my situation. Then he took me in. Mm. So, I'm here staying with the man of God mm. in a very beautiful house. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a glorious house. A glorious house. In fact, to me, mm. it's, a, it's a very glorious house. Mm. You know, mm. <laughs> you have a kitchen there, mm. you have sitting room television, you mm. know. Mm. Yeah, so I'm there mm. and you know, I had to be there as a house girl. I had to do the house Take chores. The, yeah. You know, somebody has accommodated me. Mm. Now I should do you should also assist. I should assist in one or another. So now you are a house girl. Now I'm in doing... the school you are a cook. I'm a cook. I'm a student <laughs> and, and I'm also a, a student <laughs> of high school. Yes. And would wouldn't you feel intimidated going back to high school and yours? Yeah, I did. Mm. It was three years mm. after my primary. So mm. of course I was the only big girl in the class mm. with the small girls and boys over there. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm mm. there, but Mm. I didn't mind that. Mm. So I'm doing the all tasks. Mm. You know, mm. you are from home. Yeah. After doing the chores, taking kids to school, mm. coming back to school now, mm. I need to find food for the for the entire school. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, I need to be learning. Mm. So it was a package of itself. <laughs> Yeah, it's God yeah. working on you. Yeah. So you want to keep you busy. Exactly. God really kept me busy. Yes. Because at the moment I'm done with the cooking, mm. there's lunch hour. Mm. I should be serving there. Mm. I've become a worshiper mm. and I've been given a, a, a role to play. Yeah. So I'm leading them over there in the lunch hour, mm. coming back, serving the students and the teachers. Mm. Sometimes even I serve and I remain... With no food. Mm, mm. But now it really molded me. Amen. Yeah, it really molded me mm. for three years. Mm. And then here I am in form four. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should be registering. Mm. But now the, the principal tells me mm. I don't have money to register you. Mm. Who was sponsoring you? Who was sponsoring me through? Oh. Yeah. Now here I am. Mm. With all the effort in school. In the three years. The, yeah, the three years. And to surprise you, mm. even with the, a lot of work to do, a lot of commitments, mm. God was really helping me because I used to perform so well. Mm. Mm. I used to perform so well. Mm. I cannot explain how because most of my time I used to, to engage myself in the activities mm. Mm. around there just to keep, to keep them supporting me. Mm. But God was so faithful to me. I was a bright one. Wow. Yes. So here I am in Form 4. Mm. There's no registration. Mm. And uh, I'm from the, ma uh, the house from the man of God. Yeah. And staying with a woman in the church. Then it comes at a point, he, she tells me, you have to move out of my house. Why now? She's, she, she, she just came up with it. You know, a friend of hers just saw me with some other uh, people, yeah, guys coming from the church. And she just went and told her, you know, your girl is doing this and this outside there, which wasn't true. False you see, it was false accusation. Uh -huh. So I'm here and the woman is like, I cannot accommodate you anymore. Mm. Just find yourself another place. What happened next? So I'm there discouraged because of the failure to resist. Yeah. I'm here, nobody is to accommodate me. Mm. And I have to call the guys over there, the ones yeah. I was standing with, mm. and told them, my friends, mm. I have no place to go. Yeah. So they took me in. Yes. Mm. So taking me in again, they mm. introduced me to their bishop. Mm. And the bishop also was, was really touched by everything. Mm. And the bishop was willing to help me. Mm. He told me I cannot stay with the boys. So he took me to the church. 
Now I'm back again to staying in the church. <laughs> a different church a that different time. A different church, yes. So you have been church, street, <clears throat> yes. church, street. Yeah, church. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And what are your parents <laughs> saying at home now all that time? Now, my parents, after I have disappointed, I've disappointed them, mm. they didn't want to hear about, uh, from me. But now during the schooling time, yeah. it happened, we went for a rally, a conference mm. in uh, Kisumu. Yeah. So from there, I went home. Yeah. So my, my mom seeing me with the uniform, mm. and I'm telling her I'm in school, mm. they were surprised. Ah. They were really surprised. So it, the, the, it gave them another picture. You know, they, they said my life, only God knows about it. And they see God in my life. They see God in your life. Yes. And now they are meeting us a transformed guy. I changed that totally. Yes. A God is inspired and committed to serve God. Yes. Yes. So, so during that that period, now uh, everything about the registration and everything. So I'm in another church. Uh, trying also to serve God there. Yeah. yeah, so I'm waiting on God, you know, it's been from Child Street, Child Street, and here I am again. Yes. Yeah, just wondering what God has in store for me. Yes. And um, during that period, remember the guys who took me, yeah. yeah, took me in. They helped me with the accommodation, the connection to the bishop. Yes. So one of them gets interesting. That's interested and he's going all over <laughs> saying that he wants to marry me. And has he told you? No, he hasn't told me. He had not and approached me. And are you in a relationship? I wasn't in a relationship. With him? No. So he's there, you know, telling his bishop how he wants to marry me, calling his mom at home. And, uh, you know, even in the meetings. Um, it's all over, it's public, you know. Everybody knows that this guy wants to marry me. So he has put me in a fix. And uh, I have no option. Actually, <laughs> he became so, it's like, so obsessed, you know. You know, I was a church guy. I was committed to serving God. And every guy out there who was looking to, you know, everyone who was ready to marry was looking for such a committed guy. So this guy and the, the, the publicity and everything who wants to become the one to to have me, you understand? So he's, he's so jealous and everything. Doesn't want to see other guys around me. So the story goes on. Will he marry me? Yeah. He married me. He married me. No. With your own sense. <laughs> <laughs> so the marriage was so funny and tricky. Personally, on my side, I wasn't for that. And how comes? Surely, God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or is it a law? Sympathy or is what? What? You mean? know. You know, after the, the 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 help they gave me, you know, and this guy has has in fact he has published it all over. And I'm like, if I disappoint this guy, I don't know what to do. So yes, I'm so afraid, mm. you know, because he also had a testimony of his own. Mm. So I was like, hey, if I, I dare to deny him, I don't know what he can do, you know. So I get into a, 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 a marriage relationship. But through it all, there was this voice, God trying to tell you, no, God communicating, but I wasn't getting to the voice of God. I was actually ignorant. You know, and I got myself into this this marriage. So the marriage happens. The marriage happens. Is there a wedding? No, there wasn't a wedding. Just prayers. Just prayers and blessings. Even no parents at all. No parents. Yeah. <laughs> you just did it that way in the church. We are married. So the marriage also takes another turn on me. I'm no longer committed to God. No longer reading the Bible the way I used to. So I've just become a housewife and a normal, a normal person, you know. So just 
know, worshipping out of the experience and everything. But now that relationship with God was somehow they dis there was a disconnection, you see. So the marriage itself also it has become a journey. Challenges are to the other. So you find there's so much infidelity and faithfulness, irresponsibility, you know. The, the person is not responsible. I have to go outside there and hustle, bring food on the table. And the man doesn't care. So it 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 bring it comes with the, a lot of regrets. Yeah. So after like a year, I get pregnant. Now the baby is on the way coming. The father is not working. I have to go out and them with my pregnancy, just trying to hustle and bring something home. But the guy is into other other ladies outside there. Other ladies? Yes. The same guy who was obsessed with you. Yes, exactly. You see. Mm. So it bring it brings a lot of frustration. And uh, so it it takes me back to the church. Mm. Because even staying with him in that in that room, it's not it doesn't bring that. You know, it's all frustration and tears, you understand? So I'm back to church. Pregnant but still sleeping in church, being helped by church members and so on. You can't even afford to get a house. No, I wasn't in a position. So back to that. Back to church again. Back to the cycle. Back to the cycle. Asking God now, now now I'm getting to understand the, the voice that God used to to speak to speak to me. And you couldn't and I, I I wasn't able to obey the voice of God. Now I'm, it's like I'm getting the fruits of my own decisions, you understand? So I'm there frustrated with life. The guys out there enjoying with other ladies and And is the type one again? Yeah, the guy is born again. <laughs> Ministering also. Ministering? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the frustration goes on. So we try out this marriage thing. After some time I'm about to get to to just get to give back and come back to the house. Just with the hope maybe things will work out. So trying to work out things, the child is here, I was operated on, and you know, doctors want 40k, and 40k is nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. Another yeah. miracle is needed. <laughs> I need another miracle from God, because the guy has nothing, I don't have anything. So the guy tries to take things from the house, want to sell them, even if he sell everything, yeah. it won't even be a half of the million money. So the church chips in again. Yeah. Then this bishop is giving twenty thousand from the church account, and to me it was only it was a miracle. Amen. So Amen. the church gets me out of that hospital with the child. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the house, there is no food. Back no food. food. Yes. So back to this guy, the guy tries to be, you know, so calm with everything. So, <clears throat> try to give him a chance, try to work out things, but things didn't just work out. So, he tried to separate like two, three times before now the final decision. So it reached a point, it didn't go into work. So everybody had to so you had to find ways. You had to find ways. The marriage. The marriage could not work. Uh, With all the efforts. The input efforts. Try to, eh, to, to beautify yourself and do everything. Nothing is working. You used to beautify yourself. Yes. Please. Be. Yes. Because I pierced even my nose. You, you pierced know, the nose. Go for exercise. Just yes, just to keep that figure fit. Nothing. You thought maybe you were not maybe. a maraway away now. Exactly. You know, somebody putting you into that position, you just feel like, you know. And you said that even you disappointed, you felt rejected. I felt rejected, betrayed, unworthy, mm. you know. 
low self-esteem. Yeah, it's so low, you know. I but can you say that it was because you failed to hear the voice, to obey, you had the voice, uh -huh, uh -huh. but you failed to obey, to obey the voice. It was failure to obey the voice of God mm. that made me go through this. Mm. And it wasn't that is. What can you tell someone who will be watching this? And they are getting into marriage decisions right mm. now. Maybe mm. they are young. Maybe they are still, they are not so sure of parents. They are in university. And they are in a, in a, in a, in a variable decision about getting to marriage. Yes. How of your experience the pain that the marriage caused you? Mm -hmm. And maybe you felt from charge, you felt. Maybe you also felt misused. Yes. I believe we pass the things to become lessons to us. Yes. And we be given a chance to meet with people say, well, my encouragement to a lady outside there, and a young woman who is uh, trying to to hustle solo just to you know to grow and maybe want to get married. <clears throat> I would like to just talk to you. You know, marriage is not an easy journey unless you are prepared. Regardless of how vulnerable and desperate the situation might be, it is always good to trust in God and listen to the voice of God because God speaks always. And the voice of God is so still. And this voice comes from within. So don't be, don't be, don't be, don't reach that point because of desperation or maybe you're lacking something in your life and you feel maybe a man can do it for you don't run into marriage because of desperation listen to the voice of god and be prepared both spiritually mentally physically psychologically prepare yourself to enter into marriage because it will you will regret if you make a wrong decision don't be like me I did that, I did not listen to the voice of God and it took me almost four years of my life because of being in a wrong relationship. So my advice to you is always listen to the voice of God and be prayerful and God will lead you in the right way. Amen. 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 Listen to the voice of God. Yes. Obey. Be prayerful. Yes. Obey. Listen and obey. Yes. Wow. So now the marriage is over. The marriage is over. Did you move on? Did he move on? Yeah, he did, he did move on. Yeah, he did move on with his life. And I remained with my daughter. Oh, you were left with the daughter? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So I have built through it all. And the Lord has been my strength. The Lord has taken me through it. You know. Even if you fall, learn to rise up. Because there is hope. There is always hope. And God gave me hope. And right now, I'm living my life fully depending on God and trusting on Him. And always wanting to listen to, to obey His voice. Amen. Yes. Are you looking for somebody? I'm a bishop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Actually, I'm not looking for somebody, um, you know, taking my own time and getting to know myself better, to understand the will of God for my life is my desire right now. But when the right time comes, the right person will come my way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. About your worship ministry. Yes. So, um, along with this journey, when did you know that you have a gift for music and worship? Because I know you as a worshiper. Yes. You carry the glory of God and the bless of good focus. Mm -hmm. So, among us, these challenges in the journey of the streets, church, streets, church, marriage, faith, marriage. Yes. Try, try prostitution. Prostitution. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it was at that juncture when the Lord did not allow me to enter into prostitution. When I had an encounter with the Lord during my high school time, that's when I realized this calling in me. And there's a way God used to, God opened me up, gave me vocals. I've never gone to a vocal school. Yes. I've never been coached, you know. But that intimacy with God, the Spirit of God would teach me. And, uh, and I had this fellowship. So I used to minister through CU rallies, you know. I used to minister to, in, in churches. And that's when I realized I have this calling of worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And how far are you from it now? Okay. I mean, have you produced new music and all that? Okay. And what are your plans for music? Mm-hmm. So, through the journey, the journey has been really inspiring. And uh, the Lord has blessed me and enabled me to, to record two songs, yes. uh, which I've done the video, they're already on YouTube. Yeah, if you find such Jerusalem City by you find them. Check the link on the comment in the description. Yes. You're going to put the link there so you can check it there. Mm-hmm. Yes. So and subscribe to her channel and that means. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and uh, I know he has good plans. Yeah. God has better plans. Yeah. So I'm still pursuing this. Mm-hmm. The main aim is just to make sure that the gospel goes all over. Yeah, that person in the village, maybe I cannot be able to walk through to the village or somewhere, but the message through singing can reach out to many souls out there, and that is the main thing. Yes. Where are you seeing yourself five, ten years from now? Ten years or five years from now, I'm seeing myself on international levels. I'm seeing myself worshipping with great ministers like Sinach, you know, in great nations all over the world. Amen. I see myself also coming up with a, a production studio Amen. so that not only me, but the talents, the, the other ministers coming from down there or those that are not able to, to just enter into this ministry yeah. through, through recording, they can find that support. Yeah. So my desire is that five years to come, I'll be able to have ministers I have raised through this ministry and myself, I see myself on another level in ministry. Amen. 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 Somebody wants to get to the way you are right now in music. How can you tell? Okay. Yes. Musically, you know, God is everything. Mm. God is a good teacher. And he's a good mentor. Amen. He's a good role model. Amen. We can never get an, a, an example like him. Amen. As much as you learn from men and everything, but your relationship and your intimacy, your contact with God is the first thing that you should have. Because through that, he will lead you in the right path. He will lead you to the right people to, to, you know, to make you grow. So, growth in ministry, or maybe want to grow in ministry, learn to, you know, want to know more, want to, to learn from those who have already gone far, you know, learn to listen to other mu- people's music, get inspired, and learn to pray. Prayer has been that one thing that has kept me going, and trusting God has been one thing that has kept me growing in ministry each and every day. So, learn to trust in God and learn to learn from other ministers outside there and learn to pray. Prayer will pay, get you deeper, you'll find revelation. You'll find revelation for songs and other, your personal growth will come through that. The person getting to position like Jerusalem, yes. who is right now is by some ministers. Uh-huh. Speak to them and tell them whether you continue or what yes. they should do as you come to the edge. Okay. Yes. So to my sisters outside there, maybe you feel 
this prostitution or this way mm. is the best solution. It is not a solution. It will bring more trouble, to bring diseases. It will get you into early death because it is not a good way. Prostitution is not a way. Even if it will take you to cry, to just, you know, cry to the Lord. Because maybe you don't, you don't have somebody to talk to, but you have a Father in heaven. There is God in heaven who hears prayers and answers. He hears your cry. So don't run into this way because it is not a good one. God has a good plan for you. He has a great plan and for future for your life. So keep holding on to God. Keep holding in His promises. Even though things seem not to work, but for sure, God loves you and is working something for you. So the best way, the best solution to life is Christ Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. Powerful, powerful words from the great servant of God and a worshiper, Yerusa Sitiabai. Yes. Have I pronounced it right? <laughs> Sitiabai. Yes. And as you have heard, she has walked, she has passed through charities, but she has been able to try those charities because of God's grace. Yes. Even trust in God. No matter where you are, you are a man, you have lost your job through COVID. Yes. Trust in the Lord. You are a lady, you have lost your business, yes. you have lost your husband. Yes. But you trust in God. The way she looks, she doesn't look like a prostitute. Yeah. She doesn't look like a street car. The way God has given her glory, yeah. the same glory God can give you without what you think you should get. Yeah. More so, let's support her. If you're there, you are a pastor, and also the pastors have been watching our channel. Call her to me say that she has powerful songs. You can listen to the song Pray Next, and they are powerful, powerful worship songs. She can lead congregational worship. Invite her, and as she comes uh, to a church, Blessing to our life, and as we should do that, we should be promoting the kingdom of God and the gift that God has put in. So, God bless you so much for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Our channel is called Jerusalem Stiabai. Jerusalem Stiabai. Look at it in the description and the Lord bless you. Shalom. I am Pastor Amar and this is Lajibu. Maya Tima Wajana